Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the first Sunday of Lent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I, I will give you, I will give to you all this power and their glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone you shall serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels regarding you or concerning you to guard you. And with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, each year, the first Sunday of Lent uh, is one that deals with the temptation of Jesus. That time just after his baptism where he was led into the wilderness for a time of tempting where uh, the devil uh, confronted him Uh, with three basic things. Now, you can look at the three basic things in a lot of different ways. One of the ways that you can look at it is with regard to uh, the words of uh, the Apostle John in his first letter, in 1 John, where he talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those three things that are there to trip us up. And I think that when we look at the sermon, or excuse me, the uh, temptation of Jesus here, we are seeing those three things being manifested. We're seeing the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And uh, so if we, let's look at it through that lens. So the lust of the flesh. Well, Jesus was hungry. He had been in the desert for 40 days Uh, not eating a thing. He was very hungry. Remember, he was fully God, but yet fully man. He still had uh, human uh, needs such as eating. And it was at this point that the devil tempted him with the lust of the flesh. He said, um, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. In other words, you have the capability of uh, fulfilling your need uh, to be filled with food, to, to fulfill your hunger, to satisfy it. And in the desert area of uh, the Holy Land, one of the things about that desert area is the stones there are small and round, and they look like loaves of bread. If, uh, and so it was very easy for the devil to have him look at this, uh, this stone and say, you know, you could turn this into bread. You could fulfill the lust of the flesh. You could fulfill your desire for uh, the food that you need to strengthen your body. Now, interestingly enough, and we see this in all three cases, Jesus does not bargain with the devil or debate the devil. He simply declares the truth that comes from Scripture. And here he says, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. One does not live by bread alone. And so here we have this opportunity for Jesus again to be filled with food 
and be tempted to use his divine powers to bring about that satisfaction. And he doesn't. And he quotes from the scriptures, man does not live by bread alone. So there is more to life than just what satisfies the flesh. And this is a great lesson for us because especially in our day and age, it seems that the lust of the flesh is a critical characteristic of our age. There are so many people who are spending their time fulfilling their fleshly desires, their uh, what we call uh, concupiscence, that, that desire to fulfill uh, those lower nature drives that we have in our hearts and in our lives. And so here it is. We are not to live by bread alone. We're not to live by only the cravings of our life. One of the things that happens in Lent is that we have an opportunity to fast. This is, again, a way of telling our body, you know what? We don't live by bread alone, but we live by uh, the word that comes from the mouth of God. And so we take that time that is devoted to food and we give it to the Lord. So this is a real critical thing for us to remember uh, that, again, not only was Jesus tempted in the same way we are, but in that temptation, his response comes from Scripture. How good it is when us, for us to remember that we can respond to the temptations, again, by going to the Word, by going to the truth of God, and there we find the answers that we need. The second thing we see is not only is there the lust of the flesh, but there's the lust of the eyes, that what we see we many times desire. And here, the devil uh, takes him up and uh, he, he says, uh, I will show you, or uh, I'm sorry, I will give you all this power and their glory. What happened is he showed him the kingdoms of the world. I, you can just imagine almost like a, a panorama vision of uh, the devil just showing him all of the different kingdoms that his eyes could take in all the power, all the glory, all the wonder of the world. And he said, you know, I these things have been given to me. Now, that is kind of a, a, a little bit of an extension of the truth, but he uh, did have that authority uh, that was given to him by the Lord at many points to go and, and prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls, as the prayer of St. Michael says. And he says, I'll give you all this power and all the glory. It's been handed over to me. I can give it to whomever I wish. It's yours. Now, what do you have to do? You have to worship me. You have to bow down before me. And you have to give me the worship that is due to God the Father. And again, Jesus recoils at this with the words from Scripture you shall love the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. There is only one God that is worthy of worship. And again, our eyes can see so much, and we can take in all of these things that are in our world. And many times we hear the world and actually the devil speaking to us, perhaps in our hearts, saying, you know, you can have this. All you have to do is give up your relationship with God. Just put that, put that on hold. Forget about him. Forget about all of the things that you do to honor and glorify his name. All you have to do is just embrace all of the things of the devil. Just take in selfish ambition and lust and lewdness and all of these other things. I'll give you everything in this world. All you have to do is turn over your hearts to me. And again, Jesus gives us the answer that is so critical for us. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. And then finally, Jesus again is, is a led to a high pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem. And we don't know if that's a physical uh, thing or if it's, again, in a vision there in the wilderness. But what we know is the devil and Jesus are surveying all that is there. And here is the pride of life. And he said, if you are God, throw yourself down. In other words, prove yourself. Show me who you really are. He was 
counting on the pride of Jesus to say, okay, you're the devil, I'm God, I'll show you. I'll show you what it means to be God. And in doing so, he was being tempted by pride. In fact, Satan even uses the scriptures, saying, there are promises about you as the Messiah that, you, uh, that your angels will uh, be able to be commanded by you. And they were there to guard you. They're not going to let you die if you jump down from this high part place. And you know what? They'll support you. You won't be able even to let your foot uh, be, uh, you know, be stubbed against a stone. They are going to be taking care of you. And so go ahead. Show me your divinity. Show me who you are. Again, the pride of life. And the, he said to the devil, quoting another scripture, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Yeah, there are promises but there's no way that you should uh, challenge the, the Lord to test those things which are promises about him. Now, after all of this was done, and uh, Satan did not have an opportunity to really see Jesus even uh, slowly creep toward a possibility of falling into that temptation and coming into sin. It says that the devil finished every temptation and departed him for a time. I love the way that the RSV puts it. He departed from him for an opportune time. That's something that all of us have to remember. It's not just that Satan goes away and forgets. And it's like, well, it's done. No, he waits for an opportune time. There may be a time, like if we're being tempted and we, uh, we don't submit to that temptation, we live in victory, there may come a time where we're even weaker, more vulnerable. And you know what? That may be the opportune time. The devil is always looking for opportune times to work in our hearts and work in our lives to lead us away from the Lord. And I think, again, what we have to remember is you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, it's always good to be with you, the Lord willing. We will be together tomorrow for another edition of Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.